Good morning, evening, fam. Ow. I'm your friendly unknown, sir. And I got some serious news to pass on to everybody. And what I'm about to say could mean the world's disaster. It can turn your joy and laughter to tears and pain. All right, y'all. And family, you know love is in the of love today. I ain't going to keep going on, y'all, because I just woke up. Good morning to you. I know better than that. <laughs> Afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the safe place right here, all right? Which is really the mental house with me, your host, the minister of soul, Khadija. Listen, y'all, I had to make this video pretty early because I really do. I know that things need to be done, everything, in decency and in order. And I had to make this response to the NFAC in Lafayette, Louisiana. There's a lot of y'all that's sick and tired of hearing about the NFAC. And you call them agents. And you, you're saying that, you know, he, uh, they're setting people up and taking your names in the database. And blah, 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 blah. And what's so sad for me at this age of my life, and I mean, well past 50, so I'm a, a elder. I'm just the kind of elder that is open-minded because I work with a lot of youth. Because you, I work with a lot of youth that keep my mind pretty much on the pulse of what, uh, you know, behavior. And that's what I study. And so when we start talking about our emotional damage, being in show business, being a part of this world, just like y'all, you begin to, and it depends on how much you study, is how much you get back out of your experiences of life, right? So a lot of y'all always bring up J. Edgar Hoover, you always bring up COINTELPRO, and you are, but what y'all fail to see, especially as uh, Adolfs right now, black folk. Descendants of slaves, us, those who don't really, we're really nomads, to tell you the truth. We're Frankenstein monsters. And this is what y'all don't want to deal with. This is the hard pill that's hard to swallow. It's hard to swallow the job, the, the really filthy, disgusting, sad uh, commentary of what has happened to us. So when we begin to examine that we begin to see black fear we begin to see uh don't go there as an agent don't he gonna get you killed and uh oh, nah, i can't stand it see and these are mostly people who aren't educated at all these are people who have never held civil service job y'all probably could call me a damn agent hell i used to work for the city i have worked for the state because see people that's probably a little older, past, I'm a baby, the last of the baby boomers. So y'all can't relate to a lot of shit. Um, like those of us who rushed the bum in the police departments and the sheriff departments um, so we could have a balance. So you, you wouldn't have what you had prior to the 50s, like police coming in and busting your head. Did you know it was one time you couldn't even vote or you couldn't even file a com police complaint unless you uh, was a homeowner? See, y'all don't know a lot of stuff, y'all, because y'all wasn't alive and was barely born. So, of course, that's the luxury of the society to keep you ignorant. So, and I'm saying all this to say, I know I get ahead of myself. Y'all know I'll be all over the place. If J. Edgar Hoover was so afraid of the second coming of a Fred Hampton, a black messiah who could energize 
and wake up like, who has been on the planet? Who has come to y'all in terms of Fred Hampton uh, times a thousand than Brother John J. John Fitzgerald <laughs> Jam Master J. Now, I know a lot of y'all mad about that. A lot of y'all he he ain't got he the leader and he talked to uh, people in your country. Listen, shit or get off the pot. I don't know you heard your grandparents say that. I ain't got no time to nurse you. If you a baby, you go home and suck your mama's breast. We're looking for men and women, those who have been washed of uh, uh, the the fear off of them. See, so you can make up all kinds of excuses about what Master J is doing. But I think it should play out before you really um, say things. We've been duped before, so it won't be the first time. But if you think that we ain't never going to get free, that means you was a slave thinking in the first place. Who are you and what have you done? You see, this is what happens when you're dealing with a lot of people. And see, they've dummied us down to a, to a point. There's a lot of us who have never worked a decent job. Only jobs we ever had was a service job. And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with that because I use services. But if you've never had a job where you worked inside of a police department, or if you worked inside the city hall, or you worked inside uh, 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 any other ev um, entity of government, you speak and you know how to work in a, uh, uh, and you know how to follow direction. You know how to have discipline. You know how to enforce regulations and rules, especially if you're an officer or in my case, like a health inspector. You know, I had to write tickets. See, a lot of y'all don't even, because you can't, you, you know, and, and those of y'all who know, y'all know what I'm talking about, especially my older listeners. But I'm making this specifically for my younger listeners because you got a lot of old heads that's giving y'all real bad advice because they're all shook down with fear. They're all, they got a fear of blanket just all over because they've been dogged out. And can you blame them? We've been beat down so much in this society, we scared of everything. So if a Messiah came and showed up at our door, we're glowing like the Jesus. We still be afraid because they have done a job on our minds in terms of making us riddled with fear, splitting us down the middle, beating us in front of our woman, in front of our man, in front of our children. That has a psychological toll on you. So. When you hear people talking about, oh, you see, he got a sign up list and, and he going to get everybody. Fools, don't y'all know they already got your social security number? They know where y'all live if you get a check. So uh, what are you deeds? What are your deeds? Because if you did something, they know how to come and get you anyway. They don't got to wait for Mr. Jam Master J's set up list. Is you crazy? They don't have to wait. This society is well equipped to come pick your ass up. Uh, they can't pick me up. I'm not a law violator. I'll do a video about that later when they accuse me of, of, of voter fraud. They can't pick me up. I've never had a ticket. I've never been a felon. Never been accused of a crime in my life. They can't find my ass when they wanted to put something on me. So don't be stupid enough to think that because Jam Master J is getting uh, recruiting people that that's a problem. A lot of y'all don't even know what formation look like. Y'all expect him to come. What you want him to do? Come down to Louisiana shooting at people? See, we are so ignorant too. And like I said, it's hard. To, we are black people are hard people to lead. Elijah Muhammad said personally about us. We're hard headed, stiff necked, and rebellious. And one of the hardest people to lead. You understand me? Because we don't listen. And then all of us think we know everything. The, the, they done beat the warrior class out of us. They done beat the um, able to accept the hierarchy. They beat all of that out of us. So now, again, we're Frankenstein monsters. And when somebody shows up in the person to help you liberate yourself, if not nothing else, to show yourself discipline. To show yourself worthy, to show yourself knowing how to have a formation. What you think the FOI is? They that without guns. See, except they're a religious sect. 
See, and if you if people always say, well, why, why uh, the FOI ain't doing what Jam Master J did? Jam Master J is not a religious sect. See, if you don't know these laws, if you don't know myself being an ordained minister, <laughs> okay, a real one, to tell you that there's certain laws set up for ministers that are not set up for the public. You ever notice how when there's a, a um, um, you know, a big to do, everybody's getting arrested. You know, you're in there. The clergy is going to walk out the door while you're still in there, because there's just unless the clergy wants to stay there to make a point. You understand what I'm saying? So there's certain things in this law, this society has to set you up for protection. That doesn't mean that it's always honored, but it's set up to keep you protected under the Constitution. So if you've never had any discipline, if you've never had a job where you've had to work under the Constitution to some degree, well, the only way you can get your uh, um, um, retribution to some degree is to have a disciplined group to show this government Put like Dr. King said, put what you said on paper and make it true. Let me see you deny me with my numbers armed like the diggers of defense and allow me to show a different image of black men. And a lot of y'all got a problem with it. Okay. J. Edgar Hoover feared a charismatic black man you know, to wake black people up. He feared it. Y'all got the blueprint, but you're still doubting him. If nothing else, this is a phenomenon. Y'all don't even understand what Willie Lynch said. He said that this, we don't have to worry about these Negroes. We can keep them perpetually miserable. Unless what, you guys? A phenomenon comes along. This is a phenomenon. And don't miss it. Don't miss your opportunity. I got so emotional because just to see it, just to see it, I know how empowered my folks felt in Kosciuszko, Mississippi, when the deacons of defense was patrolling. I can remember how my older relatives felt about some militia sticking up to protect us from a government that won't, that helps us get got. <laughs> if you want to break it down, this is what Huey knew, uh, Newton and what Bobby Seal and the Black Panthers was doing. That's, that's what they were doing. They were saying we got a right to bear arms. The sad part about it is Y'all act like y'all don't even see yourself as a citizen. And I get it. Because Malcolm did say, you can have some kittens in the oven and, and don't make them biscuits. So I get it. I get it. This country fears um, discipline, formated, able to take order, um, able to listen, able to to put uh, uh, defend their community. This is this society has never had to deal with that on a large scale. So this is a phenomenon. Understand the time that you're living in, and appreciate. I appreciate the higher power for allowing me to be on the earth at this time and in this place and in this space. Because you're witnessing a phenomenon that Willie Lynch said would never happen. <laughs> that J. Edgar Hoover worked so tirelessly to stop from happening. And here it is at our door right now. And we want to discourage black people from shedding their armor of fear and knowing that they have a right. Being peaceful, they're not doing anything. But having 
formations armed like the Constitution allows them to do. You wouldn't even say that if it was a, a bunch of ROTC students with uh, um, being armed and was having formation because you expected to see it when it comes from the white man barreling down a gun on us. But it's really no fun when a rabbit got the gun. And so for those of y'all who don't like what I'm saying, my, my biggest fear is undisciplined, ignorant, rah rahs taking their own agenda and showing up with the NFAC, who is a disciplined, spiritual, as far as I'm concerned, at least I know, I, I, I know what, um, uh, um, Jam Master J is putting out. So who's ever under the sign of his voice is getting some spiritual food because we are spiritual based people. He is feeding the spirituality in us. Not that religious dogma that we've been made a slave through. That's why a lot of us scared of them. Because you're slaves. It's okay. I get it. I get it. But you do have to be bold and you have to be willing to die. And I contend if you haven't found anything to die for, why are you living? And at some point you have to be willing to want to protect your woman, your children, your grandchildren, and your legacy just like the white man want to protect his. And if you don't see yourself like that and you call yourself a warrior, man or woman, you're part of the problem. And we need to sweep your weak ass off to the side. Because only the strong will survive. Not those of y'all who fear this white man. Nobody's going out there starting no trouble. Nobody's going out there willy-nilly ignorant, undisciplined, unable to follow the law. Because if you are, Jay don't want you around him. And I wouldn't want you around me either. Because ain't nothing worse than a bunch of ignorant ass Negroes. Or white folks for that matter. But I'm just speaking to my group right now. Talking about he's a snitch and all this kind of stuff. A lot of y'all got snitches living right across the street from you, next door to you. Telling the police everything about who do what in the neighborhood. Y'all ain't doing nothing, saying nothing about them. I know a few snitches in my neighborhood. God bless the dead. My man Stuart used to come and tell me all the time, so-and-so is a snitch, but don't look out for so-and-so. Now don't be messing with him, he's a snitch. Yeah. So, you know, I might not, you know, have had a lot of contact with the law, but I didn't grow up falling down from heaven. A lot of my friends got felonies. Can't vote. Can't bear arms. Can't buy our firearms. You know, but they got guns. But they would never show up with Jam or uh, Master J because they know they're out of order. Now, if somebody comes to that door, they do it with that rah rah stuff. They're going to put them down where they stand. Whether they're a felon or not. Because the self-preservation is the first law. They don't worry about that other shit on the other end. But we should be proud of the NFAC. Just like we should, we were proud of the Panthers. Like we were proud of Deacons of Defense. Don't let nobody, um, uh, sucker you into being so riddled with fear that you're not even using no common sense. You're not a student of history. Then you just taking everybody's word for everything. And of all our studies, Brother Malcolm said, history best rewards our research. So with that being said, family, I'm going to go. It's early, early, early in the morning. 
my voice is going. So, we'll talk to you later. And be blessed at NFAC for life. I'm with it.